sick again. <laughs> How many times is that now that you've been sick? I think it's four. How are you feeling, Rob? Uh, pretty awful, to be honest, mate. Are you going to call it a day, or are you? I took a swig of Coke and I just threw up everywhere. 1.85 kilometres. Feels so far, doesn't it? Why am I here? Why am I here? Why were any of us here? Why would any of us choose to travel 100 miles non-stop on foot? And if you've done it once, why would you choose to do it again? Just six weeks before, I had completed my first 100 mile race on the Thames path from London to Oxford. Now, here I was, lining up at the start of the South Downs Way 100, hoping to make it from Winchester to Eastbourne in less than 30 hours. We're in a field in Hampshire. This is Matterley Bowl. Uh, it's quarter past five in the morning. It's the start of the South Downs Way 100. We've done this before. You've seen my videos of this before. Uh, this time we're doing it with Victoria. So uh, Victoria's back for her second 100 mile race. She wasn't scared off too much by the Thames path. It's going to be very warm today, possibly up to 27 degrees. Hopefully on the tops of the hills, it'll be a bit more breezy, so that'll cool us down. But yeah, we have to be careful today. We just have to drink sensibly, run sensibly, and uh, look after ourselves, because we're going to burn up otherwise, I think, today. Just like Thames Path, there are two drop bags along the course. And, and a finish bag as well. So when you get to the finish, you can get a bag which has got all your warm clothes in and towel and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then along the course, there are two drop bags. One is at Washington, which is at 54 miles. And the other one is at House Dean Farm, which is around 20, uh, around 78-ish uh, miles, something like that. So we're just dropping in, or I'm just dropping in um, bags for Washington. Cheers, buddy. I think Victoria's got a bag for House Dean Farm as well, uh, but I, I haven't. Welcome to Film My Run. We are at Matterley Bowl. We're about to start the South Downs Way 100, Victoria's second 100 mile race. What the heck am I doing here? It's going to be really, really hot. We have to just manage our pace, manage our nutrition, hydration because a day like today is a day where you get to 30 miles and you're done and you don't want to carry on. Let's not let that happen to us today. Uh, we're going in 20 seconds. Tom is not going to go off too fast today, are you, Tom? No. Two, three, one, four. We're off. We do two laps of Matterley Bowl before we actually start on the South Downs Way. Everybody's running uphill, what's that all about? And into the sunshine already. Look at that, beautiful behind us. The South Downs Way 100 has always been slightly short of 100 miles, even when the race started at the Chilcom Sports Ground nearer Winchester. These days you have to do four miles of loops, jumping onto the South Downs Way and then back off again before eventually starting the trail proper. This is my friend Tom Chamberlain from Guernsey. What are you doing all the way over here, Tom? Um, I am running the South Downs Way 100. So what were you last year? I was 28 and a half hours, roughly. So anything under that, massive bonus, but it's probably going to be as hot as last year, maybe hotter. Come and do the Guernsey Ultra, which is the G36. Um, a lap of the beautiful land of Guernsey. Stephen's run it before. I think he even went swimming one year, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, come to Guernsey, it's beautiful. This is what we're here for. Beautiful sunshine, poppies on the fields, a beautiful wide open track, easy running, four miles in and yeah, absolutely perfect. The early miles were relaxed and steady. So much so in fact that almost everyone else was ahead of us. Despite that, we were still moving at a sub 24 hour pace and I had no intention of us going any faster. 
I can only assume that everyone else had planned a slightly more aggressive start. 10 miles done, arriving at the first aid station. Time to eat some food, fill up the bottles, and then we've got 12 miles to the next one at Queen Elizabeth Country Park. Let's see what's left for us, because we're right at the back. Hi, Michael Fish, how are you? Oh, <laughs> What are these sandwiches? They are peanut butter, and there's a fresh cheese one, if you like. Oh, yes, please. That's absolutely perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your help. Cheers, guys. Right, first aid station done, and we're on our way again. I can't get my bottles to sit down in their pouches. I don't know why. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm mostly eating. Um, it is from the fast show. This week, I have been mostly eating Bourbon biscuits. <laughs> On a sunny summer's morning, the South Downs Way is classic English countryside. Rolling hills, fields and valleys stretching out as far as the eye can see. Three hours into the South Downs Way 100, we've done a half marathon, 21 kilometres, and we're now climbing Old Winchester Hill. This is one of the parts of the course where there's been a slight diversion. See, you see that path there? That's the old South Downs Way path and it used to go just straight up the hill. This one, we have a dog leg to the right to go kind of round a bit. I'm still finishing off my crisps from the last aid station. We are feeling okay, but it is starting to warm up. I'll probably mention the heat a few times during the course of this video. <laughs> Vic, you all right? Vic says she's all right. Of course, the South Downs Way path has been used for thousands of years, but it was only opened as a national trail in 1972. Right, we're just at the top of Old Winchester Hill here on the South Downs Way 100, and we stopped. I knew that Alan's Cafe was here, and I thought we might just grab a, a drink or something. And uh, Victoria wanted full fat milk, so Alan gave us two cups of full fat milk and he didn't charge us for them. How awesome is that? Now, I'm not saying if you come here, you'll get free milk. Don't come here wanting your cornflakes, but uh, come to Alan's cafe. Uh, he's always here. Cheers, buddy. Alan's coffee, there he is. Hiya, thank you. Okay, so we're at 20 miles in four hours, 37 minutes. It's hot. It's not easy but I'm feeling okay power of the mind and I am trying my best to stay as relaxed as I can there's a field of barley there cookie of barley I could murder a glass of lemon barley squash Just gone 11 o'clock in the morning that means five hours of running 35 kilometers completed just under 35 kilometers and we're descending Butzer Hill which is one of the most famous parts of the South Downs Way course beautiful rolling hills and this lovely downhill into the Queen Elizabeth Country Park Can't go, mad for food. Been to the edge station at QE Park. Well done. Thank you. If you've ever watched coverage of the Western States 100, you'll see runners wearing bandanas full of ice around their necks. Stephen and I brought along our own homemade scarves for that very purpose and managed to get some ice at the Queen Elizabeth Park checkpoint. Yeah. Right, we're at South Harting aid station, which is where we volunteered last year. Um, and Debs is here. Hi! <laughs> it's really, really hot. We are already suffering. We're 25, 26 miles in Marathon now. Done. Marathon done in, oh, only about eight hours. <laughs> Have you got Marmite anywhere? Uh, we haven't got Marmite. Okay, peanut. Marmite one if you want. No, it's all right. Peanut butter's fine. Okay, thanks, guys. See ya. Right, that's South Harting done. 
Let's get on our way to the next stop, which is Cocking at 35 miles. So just under 10 miles to go, nine miles actually, to go to the next aid station. Sometimes it's hard to make sense of the mix of emotions engendered by running in such a beautiful place on such a beautiful day, whilst at the same time suffering in the heat and feeling so tired. You're full of life with no life in you. You wouldn't want to be anywhere else, but you also wish you were at home in bed. Once you've come down off Harting Down, which is arguably the most beautiful part of this race, uh, people often get very frightened because they suddenly see this hill in front of them. <laughs> um, but thankfully, we don't have to go up that, we go uh, round that way. 10k to Cocking Aid Station, which will be 35 miles into the run. just descending the hill into Cocking Aid Station at 35 miles. It's fair to say that Victoria is struggling a lot with the heat. Um, my stomach's not too bad, um, but if I was to go any faster, my stomach would turn as well. Victoria's having a great amount of difficulty with her stomach. Um, and and when, it's, when it's hot like this, it's difficult to keep food down, it's difficult to regulate your body temperature and your stomach just goes haywire so um, and I think a lot of people that's happening too so we just have to plod it out for the next four or five hours and hope that the heat dissipates early evening so that we can start to do some running how's your stomach doing I don't want to talk about it it's just too hot for me are you going to call it a day or are you? I'm too hot. I've just got such a headache. You know, I just ran, you know, on the top there. Yeah. And it just gave me a headache. And thought, no. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, I've got my mouth full. Right, we finally made it to Cocking Aid Station. These guys have loads of ice and they have saved our lives. Uh, thanks very much, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, safe travels. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be tough well. See you. Look after yourself, Tom. See you. Right, we're off. It's um, eight minutes past three in the afternoon. It's not going to cool down any time soon. So 35 miles in. Uh, cut off there isn't till half four, so we are still inside cut off. Any chance we could get to cool off was taken. The ice in our neck scarves really was amazing. Really struggling to move in this heat. You might have spotted both Terry and Tom dropped at Cocking along with numerous others. In terms of the heat, the sections between 30 to 50 miles are some of the most exposed on the route and so many people dropped out of the race here. 66 kilometres, 40 miles or so in. Cadence Clubhouse Cafe for more drinks, hot or cold. Uh, 10 hours, 38 minutes in. You're right, Vic. As the afternoon wore on, we kept hoping that the temperature would ease up, allowing us to move just a little faster over the ground. But it's hard not to have your spirits momentarily lifted when you look out in front of you at this ancient and beautiful landscape. Okay, this is Horton Farm, which is about 45, 46 miles. We've got nine miles to go to um, the drop bag point, which is uh, Washington, which is 54 miles. But we're going very slowly, very slow. So we're losing time all the time. How are you feeling, Rob? Uh, pretty awful, to be honest, mate. Tougher than I thought it was going to be. I'm, I'm not particularly bothered by hundreds, but it's just the weather's got me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just check point to check point, see, see if I can get through or not. I think that's the same here, to be honest. Yeah. 
Despite her stomach issues, Victoria kept marching forward, that steely determination written across her face. Just after the 50 mile mark, the route leaves the South Downs Way and drops down into the village of Washington, where we could collect our drop bags and try to reset ourselves for the night section. The sun is going down as we drop down into Washington at 54 miles, 14 hours and 18 minutes. So we're not breaking any speed records, but we are just plodding along, trying to get in before cut off to the each aid station. The cut off at Washington is 10 past 10, so we should be fairly well in time, but we just have to maintain that because we're we're not going fast, so we have to keep up at least three and a half miles an hour. Hopefully we can do that over the next 40 miles or so. We're 57 miles in and uh, it's coming up to 16 hours, so 15 hours and 52 minutes. The sun has definitely gone down now. We are on the top of Chanctonbury Ring. So uh, way over there is Worthing. And Brighton is way ahead of us. So the next aid station is St Botolph by the River Ada. And we'll be there within the next hour and a half, hour, hour and a half or so. Um, I threw up massively at the Washington aid station. I didn't film anything there because we were sorting everything out, changing tops and uh, getting everything ready for the second half of the run. So um, I didn't manage to film anything, but I, I threw up hugely in the, uh, in the men's <laughs> toilets. Victoria has already thrown up and I think she feels like she wants to throw up again. I've thrown up about three times. Okay. But we're going to get to the end, aren't we? I really hope so. I'm going to do my best. Sick again? <laughs> How many times is that now that you've been sick? I think it's four. We made it to Bottles aid station at 61 miles, feeling pretty rough, but fought our way through a long section through the night to the next checkpoint. This is Housteen Farm, 78 miles in, 22 to go. Totally wrecked, totally wrecked, but we're gonna just try and get this done. I feel like a moaner because Thames Path, I complained of the mud. This one, I'm complaining of the heat. It is 4.48 a.m. You may just be able to see the sun has just popped above the horizon over there. And it's going to be another warm day. We are 79 miles into the South Downs Way 100. Now I know you want us to be all cheerful and bright and inspirational and happy. Sometimes the reality is that these things are really hard and uh, we are very, very tired today. We've worked all through the night and after a horrendous day uh, with the heat yesterday, it's, uh, it's really taken it out of us, but we are, we are gonna try and get this done. Despite the fatigue and the sickness, the sunrise was spectacular and gave us renewed momentum and motivation to make it to the finish line. Although, along with sunrise came a rise in temperature and it hadn't really cooled down that much overnight anyway. It's a couple of minutes to six o'clock in the morning. So 24 hours is up. We have six hours to get in, but the problem is there are also cutoffs at the next two, three aid stations, which we also need to get in on. And they are looking a bit tight at the moment. We've got 17 miles to go. 
six hours to do 17 miles. Absolutely dead on our feet. Want it to be over. Is that all right? That. Yeah, perfectly fine. I'd very much like to stop throwing up. I'm trying to get it done though. South East aid station at 6.30. So uh, 9.30 is the cutoff at Alfriston. We've got six, seven-ish miles to get there. Thank you guys. Cheers. The second half of the South Downs Way 100 effectively involves climbing seven hills out of seven aid stations. We had done Washington up to Chanctonbury, Botolfs up to the top of Truly Hill, Savilscombe Farm over to Pycombe, Housteen Farm up to Castle Hill, and now we were climbing out of South East up to Firl Beacon. Next stop would be Alfriston with two climbs to go. We had our eyes firmly on cutoff times and the goal was merely to make it to the next checkpoint and avoid being timed out. Alfriston is a lovely village and making it here really feels like you're on the home stretch. Right, that's Alfriston aid station over and done with. Eight miles to go to the finish, eight and a bit miles to go. I've been feeling like I need to be sick for the past 20 miles or so. And finally in there, I took a swig of Coke and I just threw up everywhere. So that's good. Hi guys but I will probably have to do without food and drink for the rest of the run now. But it's not too far to go. It's just a couple of big hills. Victoria has left before me. She's stronger than me today. She is determined to get this done and she is already on her way. So I've got to catch her up. In terms of time, it's 8.48 in the morning. That aid station closes at 9.30. The one we're going to closes at 10.45. It's only four miles away, so we should get there well in time. Um, but it's just a case of how long it's going to take us on the hills. Um, we have, so we've got three hours and 12 minutes to get home. Three hours and 12 minutes to do eight miles. Um, yeah, again, it seems easy. In any other situation, it would be dead easy. Uh, but you just don't know in this game. The main reason I was leaving checkpoints before Stephen was that I was so paranoid that I would miss the cutoffs. I just wanted to keep pushing forward. I've done the South Downs Way 100 a few times. Um, very rarely do we come into Jevington aid station at the end. There's only 6k to go, four miles. Um, but today, really feel like we need it. So it happened in Alfriston. Victoria left the aid station before me. It took me ages to catch her up, but I eventually did. And we had both arrived at Jevington aid station together. And she left before me again. So I'm on my own again, climbing the final hill. Victoria's probably about two or 300 meters ahead of me. She's promised to wait at the top for me though. What Stephen didn't realise was that I was so hot at the exposed trig point that I needed to get into the shade. So I made my way over the brow of the hill and waited under the trees at the entrance to the gully. Right, so Victoria isn't here. She said she'd wait at the top for me. Has she waited at the top? No. So she's racing down the gully to make sure she beats me. 1.85 kilometers. Feels so far, doesn't it? We are in Eastbourne. We are finally together. Victoria didn't run off and leave me in the end. We've got just over a mile to run or to walk. We cannot believe that we are going to finish this. It's 11 o'clock. We've got an hour till cut off. So we should come in at around 20 past the hour. We both need to be sick again. 
absolutely baking hot again now. Victoria, what is your assessment of the whole thing? It's not easier than Thames Park. Do I ever want to do this again? No. I did tell her it was easier than Thames Park because in the past it has seemed to be, but today and yesterday, wow. meters to go. I can't believe we've done this. It was so hard. I've been throwing up since 50 miles. You've done amazing Victoria. To get here under those conditions with the heat affecting us the way it did. Absolutely incredible. We crossed the finish line in 29 hours and 18 minutes, 42 minutes inside the cutoff. In the first half of the race, we were effectively the last runners through every aid station. Anyone behind us failed to finish. And at the finish line, only 10 other runners came in behind us. But we had made it. Everything's packed up. I've been for a long, long sleep and a shower. This is the hottest day that I can ever remember for South Downs Way 100. It was absolutely, and I never use this word. So you might not realize um, if you've never done a 100 mile race before, it's uh, customary to give a belt buckle instead of a medal. So uh, that's Victoria's South Downs Way 100 belt buckle, her second one to add to the collection and her t-shirt, South Downs Way 100 finisher. Never again. It's hard, wasn't it? it scared you off. It's really hard. We're supposed to be doing North Downs Way next month. I know, I don't want to though. Well, we'll have to see what happens. How do you feel about your whole 30 hours, 29 and a half hours of running? Really pleased to have finished. I mean, that was just hideous, but for a very different feeling to Thames Path. So Thames Path, everything hurt. Yeah. Um, South Downs Way, my legs felt strong. I was just being sick from 50 miles and I just couldn't get calories in. I, yeah. I felt dreadful. Yeah. And we have to put the that down heat. to the heat. Yeah. yeah. I. So the same happened to me, really. I threw up so many times in the end. And your lack of sleep from the backyard. And ultra. lack of sleep from the backyard ultra really affected me as well. So, yeah, that was a tough one. Very tough. Anyway. There we are, we've done it. It's uh, another one um, done for Victoria. 200 milers now for Victoria. Let's see if we can add another one next month. But if it's this kind of weather, I don't think either of us are gonna turn up. But anyway, we will see you on the start line next time. Take care everyone, have a great one, bye-bye.